Hey everybody, this is Chris over at the Obscure Toy Files. We're doing not a review, but a comparison of uh, this new line called Crate Creatures. I'm not actually going to be opening the package because he's $40, which is not a bad price for a toy that does stuff. In the packaging, like you get this cool plastic crowbar, you get these plastic chains, you use the crowbar to unlock the lock on top, which is really neat. And then you put the other end of the crowbar in here, or right in there rather, as you can see, and that makes it pop up, which is really cool. There you go, now it's a better focus. Okay. And you put it right in here, and then it pops it up, and then I think it's spring-loaded, and then he kind of shoots out. But uh, I don't really feel like paying $40 for him. He's, like I said, the, what, the, what this company, uh, MGA, did, there'd be something really neat. I mean, like, seriously, I'm going to push the block out of the way for a minute. I mean, you have this amazing packaging, and, um, like, it really shows you all the stuff it does. And they really kind of did the whole thing like this end up. Danger, use crowbar to open, lock, and crate. Show you how to do it. If creature escapes, run. They really kind of made it seem like it was a very immersive experience. Like, you buy this toy. It's not even a toy. This is a little creature, and he's trapped in this box. And you might not want to let him out. Like, do not pull tongue, but I'm going to do it because, you know, who, who wouldn't do that? It's like, I'm just going to put your tongue back in the air and leave it alone. Or I'll just take it out and do it again. But it makes lots of sounds and noises and light, eyes light up and it vibrates and stuff. It says, creature creates, create creatures, free the beast. And this one's name is Sizzle. And he's a little dragon man or creature thing. He got hair says, this ends up. And it says, it gives you, it says, Roar, I'm Sizzle. I'm the youngest dragon in my family. We hail from the volcanoes of Crunchland. Sometimes I get so hungry from flapping my wings all day that I roar and shake with rage. Marshmallows are my favorite food, even though they make me burp and fart. Oh, at least he knows what he shouldn't be eating. Handle with care. It says right there. And, uh, you yeah, know, top of the box is kind of the same thing. It says beware, caution, this end up, stuff like that. So it's... And it's plastic here too. Like this is plastic. This is cardboard with some plastic, you know, you know uh, see-through material there. And then it's even plastic on the bottom. And what's neat about the bottom is you might not even realize this is supposed to be like a pallet. So like a forklift would come in and pick these up and be like boop boop and move them around in a warehouse before they ship them off to stores where children can buy them and use them as their personal little monster buddies. What I've seen from other videos, um, it's basically just he's just fabric. And he's got his arms are, his hands are plastic, and his feet are plastic, and his face is plastic. But everything else on him is kind of just fabric. And it's not bad, but for the what you're paying, $50, $40 is a lot of money to me. If this was like 20 bucks or $30, it seemed more reasonable, but 40 seems like a lot. But I understand why, because of the packaging. I mean, there's a lot of plastic in the packaging alone. I mean, this thing's pretty, it's pretty heavy. So while they're cool, man, I'm, I'm hoping this does really well, and then they're able to make smaller ones, maybe like a $20 price point. So this is where you'd be able to find one that's, you know, more in your line, like what you can afford. And maybe if it's like half the size and it doesn't do as much. Like, it'd be cool if this is a toy that doesn't have to make, you know, fart sounds and, you know, vibrate when you pull its tongue. I mean, that's neat. Don't get me wrong. It's not like, you know, it's a, it's a bad feature, but it's also like, well, is it a, is it, it's, 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 it's what's increasing the price. I mean, if it was less money, it wouldn't cost nearly as much. Or not less, not less money. If it was, well, obviously, if it was less money, it wouldn't cost nearly as much. But if it had less electronics, it'd probably cost less. Like, if they had, like, a more streamlined version of this without the electronic gimmicks in it, it may go for 20 bucks. And I'd totally buy it. I'd be like, here's my money. And they have, like, three other ones in the line. It's like a Yeti creature. And then, like, a, I think it's supposed to be, like, a pig guy. And then some sort of other monster. But I've only seen him in the store. And according to the guy at Toys R Us, these were the last three they had in the store. They don't have a spot in the store. So I'm not sure if that means they're selling out so fast that nobody even knows they're in the store or what. But he was telling me they're really hot. So I'm like, all right. I don't I mean, that these are cool. I'm going to return it to the store anyway. So it doesn't bother me. I mean, but what I wanted to do was also, you know, so as they talk about that, and again, any new properties, like he said, here's the obscure toy files. We like unique, um, unlicensed properties like things that are different or even obscure toys like we always cover like the weird stuff from like decades ago no one's ever heard of before um <laughs> like these birds they're supposed to make noises i don't even know what, from i think rust toys back in the 80s <laughs> they're a big thing they're not a big thing but you, know, you can buy them i see you guys in the land i'm so tired man chris fisher of you i gotta go all right say so you later buddy man like obscure stuff we try to cover. Things that other reviewers don't even know about. 
But like I said, these are cool. And I love the fact that it's a new, in, in, uh, not intelligent, but <laughs> a new intelligent thing. Well, it's a new intellectual property that's its own thing. It's not a movie. It's not a, based on a video game. It's not a comic book or a story. It's, it's something that they they say they sat down and said, what can we make that kids would think is cool? And I really like that. And just like with Moose Toys, they do lots of crazy things. And you have to take chances and do new stuff because that's what, you know, that's how these, all these things started. Star Wars and Transformers and G.I. Joe and My Little Pony and Barbie and Hot Wheels. All those things started with an idea and someone took a chance and it ended up being a good thing. It's just, you know, that's what the industry needs to do more now. They just don't do it as much. I think I understand why. It's a lot to throw money on. It's a big gamble. But if you sit down and make stuff that's fun and hire people that know how to make fun toys, you'll do fine. And like I said, people who made this put a lot of care into this box. I'm going to show you that in comparison to a Boglin from 1980. Five, I believe. I'm just going to double check the back of it before I misquote myself. Uh, 86. Now, this is a Halloween bog named Bog Bones. Apparently, still a piece of my Halloween candy. Check that back. Or you can hold on to it. That's fine. I'm not going to fight him for it. But this was made back in 1986, and this thing cost uh, 16.97, which you can't see because the camera won't angle up that high. So I'm just going to tweak it up for you. Yeah, so it cost $16.97 back in the day. And that might have been a discounted price. So that might have been the price at the Hills Department Store, which was a store that some people know of in different parts of the country. But they don't necessarily have it over here. One second. Okay, we're back. I just moved my table a smidge. Yeah, but this is a Boglin. This is a Halloween Boglin. <laughs> and no, I do not have the free trick-or-treat bag inside. I did, but I gave it to my cousin and he lost it, so... Danny, you stink. Uh, but this is a Halloween Boglin. So most of the boxes for Boglins look like this. They had a plastic grate. I'm free. See you later, guys. Ha-ha. <laughs> no, talk to the table over. Who does this to keep my camera supported? We're back. That Boglin made a miss. Yeah, so you had this box. You would buy this whole package. You get this whole thing. And um, one moment. All right, so you get this box. And you get this whole, like, setup. Hold on. All right. Are we still recording? Pause the tape. Okay, I think we're good. All right, cool. We found the magic spot. Notice nobody move. Yeah, so you, you buy these Boglins, and then, again, they were trying to do immersive experience also. So you have, like, handle through, bottom only. Creepy Halloween creatures are coming alive in your hands. Ages five and over. That's just kind of slapped on at the end. You know, and then you have, like, stuff on the side, like special trick-or-treat bag inside. Do not feed candy, but they ripped off the knot. So the Boglins are like, you can feed us candy. See, the sign says it's okay. There's a spider. Allergic to witch's brew, which we all know is very hyp not, not hypoallergenic. You have uh, extremely rare creature, endangered Halloweenus species, because all the they, they give them all scientific names. This boglin is called Halloweenus, I think humongous, which is the larger size of boglins. Witches and warlocks beware! On the top of the box, you have boogeyman or bust, and then you have a no witches sign. So any witches out there, you're not allowed in this area, I guess, or something. <laughs> And that's pretty neat. The, like, the whole immersive experience goes on the top, the sides, the front, even on the back, where they have the whole biologist field notes, which I'll read to you briefly. Uh, this may be the most significant discovery in history from this, this swampy bog that time for I shall name these creatures Boglins. Observing their bizarre behavior, I theorize that Boglins may be the missing link to human personalities. Could it be that long ago, Boglins told us how to laugh and cry? You were not a love, which seems weird to interject that part. It seems that each of the Boglins has its own distinct personality. The Boglins I have studied pick up human behavior, human habits quickly, and display remarkable affection. However, they do get upset if not returned to the boxes I built for them. I hereby establish the science of Bogology. May all future Bogologists learn from these notes and go on to discover new things about this most intelligent and fascinating species. So they really kind of... And it made it look like it's like... Like the person who found these took pieces of parchment, like laid on the back of the shipping crate, and just hammered them in at each corner because like the nails are bent, you know... And you see, like the boglins, observing boglins in the natural habitat, the bo large boggle, boglin species, boggle, boggle, you know, boglin is humongous, and they see dro drool, dwarf, blob, the tail design enables you to shovel mud and other food directly into their creatures' mouths. Not really, but we appreciate the idea. Large boglins' eyes glow in the dark, you can move better than the seaside side, which they can do, as we can see from the little switch inside his head. I'm alive, you! And also the small Boglins, Boglinus Minimus, and there's six different of them. And in the back of the box, the bottom of the box, you see the more, like, toy stuff. Like, yo, this is really real, it's a toy. How to remove the trick-or-treat bag. You know, how to operate the thing. How to take the plastic fastener off. So if you want to buy a Boglin brand new, and there's no zip tie holding it in place, it's probably been taken out of the package. 
You will also be zip tied in there too. Oh, look at the inside really quick. This is also plastic. Would you look inside? It says gone trick or treating. There's some bats hanging in there. Like, what's up, everybody? Uh, how are we doing? They're apparently, I'm playing, they're apparently I'm playing tic tac toe, making marks, how long I'm trapped in there, doing fractions or something. And this says humans look weird. And on the, they, 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 they put these bats over this uh, for the other toy. Like the original normal box doesn't have the bats, and you can see the writing on the inside of the box. But, um, yeah, so definitely I give Crate Creatures like a huge, you know, nod of approval, and, you know, applause and all that for what they did. And I really hope they make more stuff because anything that's immersive and fun to play and involves a little imagination as well as electronics and stuff is always fun. Give Bakamon's back his candy. But yeah, so it really, I mean, it's, it's really cool to me how like, you know, in like 30 years, somebody's finally doing something like Boglins again. And the guy who make, made Boglins, Timothy Clark, is still around and makes Boglins. So go to Facebook and look up Timothy Clark and check out his uh, uh, website, which I don't know off the top of my head. But he does mold, he does sculpt and mold his own Boglins out of rubbers, which is really cool. I have to pick some up. And that's pretty much all the tape we got left. So we're going to... Go end this really quick before I run out, of, <laughs> run out of digital space on my blasted cell phone. This is Mascara Toy Files. This is Chris Bogland Agri. Go check out Crate Creatures at uh, CrateCreatures.com and maybe I'll make more.